Here's a check on stories we're following for you today on Robin Hood Radio. The forecast as we get close to closing out the year. Sunny today, about 35 to 40. Uh, tomorrow, sunny and 40. Thursday, light rain, 50, and then turning cloudy with a wintry mix arriving on Friday. Temperatures in the mid-30s. A 92-year-old driver was killed in a two-vehicle crash in Great Barrington. One woman killed, another injured, as a two-car crash on Monday just south of Monument Mountain Regional High School at about 2 p.m. First responders from Great Barrington were sent to Route 7 in Lover's Lane near Monument Mountain Reservation parking lot for a report of a serious crash. A 28-year-old Monterey woman was traveling north on Route 7, colliding with a Subaru whose driver was trying to exit Lover's Lane onto the highway. The driver of the Subaru, a 92 year old Great Barrington woman suffered serious injuries and was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver of the Toyota was taken by Southern Berkshire Ambulance to Berkshire Medical Center in Pittsfield. They did not release the names of the victims. A story by Ruth Epstein in today's Republican American. We talked about this yesterday with Ruth on the Republican American Report. The historic Caden Union Station is now for sale. It's long been a centerpiece of the town. The landmark can be had for $1.2 million. Former First Selectman Doug Humes, Jr. is chairman of the Connecticut Railroad Historical Association. The building's current owner, the group made the purchase soon after the evening of 2001 when the station built in 1872 was heavily damaged by fire. Firefighters managed to save the section fronting the north-south tracks, but the east section and the three-story tower were destroyed in the fire. Over the past 18 years, the association, which is a nonprofit dedicated to promoting railroad history, has received $3 million in federal funds through transportation grants. After many stops and starts, the reconstruction was finally completed in 2018. The building houses Great Falls Brewery, a railroad museum, and available office space that needs to be finished off. The property is being listed by John Harney Jr. of William Pitt Sotheby's International Realty. Another member of Governor Lamont's staff has tested positive for COVID-19. Paul Mounds, chief of staff for the office of the governor, announced that the staff member was in the office as recently as Wednesday, but had only brief interactions with Lamont from an appropriate social distance while wearing a mask. Lamont will not be self-quarantined, according to Mounds. On Monday, Columbia County Department of Health Director Jack Mab reported that since Christmas, 115 new positive cases of COVID-19 have been recorded by the Department of Health, 49 new cases since Christmas Day, 35 on Saturday, and 31 on Sunday, noting that the active cases among the county residents is nearing 300 with more than 500 in mandatory quarantine. 13 individuals are hospitalized, one in ICU. Mab said that a group home in Greenport is currently experiencing five infected staff and five infected residents, while Providence Hall in Hudson has three cases. In addition, in the attempt to be proactive, 15 members of a local church assembled to tape its service, but was later learned that one was positive for the virus at the time. There are now five members who have tested positive. Over the past months, Columbia County Department of Health has been planning for the eventual distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine to county residents in accordance with the state's vaccine distribution plan, which is prioritized based on need and risk. They'll continue working to make the vaccine available in coming weeks. Currently, there is no known date when the vaccine will be available to the general public. The county encourages you to check their website regularly for updates. New York has just entered phase one of the distribution plan. Dutchess County has had six more COVID-related deaths since the figure reported last week. The 224 deaths since March are up from 218 reported last week. But the number of active cases has dropped to... 1,543. The number of hospitalizations have increased to 116. The county's seven-day average positivity rate dropped by less than a percentage point to 6.42%, but as of this morning, it's back up to 6.75%. All numbers from the county are recorded from last Tuesday. Of the 351 cities and towns in Massachusetts, just three have not seen a single confirmed case of COVID-19, and two of those are in Berkshire County, Mount Washington and New Ashford. The third is Hawley in western Franklin County. 
New York Attorney General is warning to watch out for scams on COVID-19 vaccines. If you got a call saying you're eligible for a vaccine, it's likely a scam, according to the Attorney General. The U.S. has only been recently administering COVID-19 vaccines to healthcare professionals and nursing home residents and employees, and the vaccines won't be available to the general public for at least a month or possibly two. The New York State Legislature yesterday plans to pass a bill that would extend an eviction moratorium until May 1st and strengthen a variety of laws for renters and homeowners due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Leaders said Sunday they will convene a special session to pass the sweeping COVID-19 Emergency Eviction and Foreclosure Prevention Act. In Great Barrington, they have pinpointed five entities where marijuana dispensaries' fees could mitigate funds. Now, $185,000 of that money can be spent, and the town is giving it to four local organizations and the school district to help prevent or solve any fallout from legal pot. Berkshire Hills Regional School District receives $80,000. Railroad Street Youth Project, $50,000. Berkshire South Regional Community Center, $20,000. Volunteers in Medicine, $20,000. And Construct, Inc., $10,000. Special Board of Selectmen's meeting is happening this morning at 8 o'clock in Falls Village on extension of tax relief. The Dover Town Board will have their organizational meeting coming up tomorrow at Town Hall. Immediately following that, the Town Board will have their regular meeting. Salisbury Winter Sports Association has their junior ski jump camp on January 1st and 2nd from 9 to 3 at Satry Hill in Salisbury for boys and girls aged 7 and up. Pre-registration or more information from Ken Barker at 860-806-0471. And due to the pandemic and to protect musicians and staff, Berkshire Box Society had to cancel their Bach and Telemann performance, which was to be pre-recorded live on the Bahawi stage and streamed to you on New Year's Eve. In place of that recital, they will virtually broadcast a free broadcast of the January 1st performance of the Troy Savings Bank Music Hall at berkshirebach.org slash events. Our business brief is underwritten by Morgans at the Interlaken, interlakenin.com. Also, you'll find them on Facebook and by Salisbury Bank, salisburybank.com. The Dow Jones Industrial Average will start off today at 30,403.97, the NASDAQ at 12,899.42, and the S&P 500 at 3735.36. We'll take a look at the tri-state forecast. That'll come your way in just a few moments. <music> 